All righty. Well, hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Monterey Bay Aquarium here live on YouTube. My name is Patrick. I work at the Aquarium here in social media, and we are joined by a very special guest this morning. We are here with Dr. Sal Jorgensen. Happy Shark Week, Sal. Thank you, Patrick. Thanks for having me here. All Hello, right. everyone. All right. So you folks may have uh, seen us. Oh, let me make sure that we can see us on the screen. Maybe that would help. All right. There we go. I'm Patrick. That's Sal. You are watching a big, great white shark breaching out of the water here, and that's what we're here to talk about. Uh, Sal, you are a white shark researcher uh, here at the aquarium, so uh, maybe tell the fine folks of YouTube there, uh, what, is, what is your work? What do you do? Yeah, well, I'm a senior research scientist here at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. My primary job is to study uh, white sharks and other sharks and rays. Um, I had to go to do a lot of schooling to get here. I have a PhD, took a long time. Uh, but I'm really happy to, to have this job. I feel like it's a, a real privilege to uh, get to work with such uh, majestic animals and, um, you know, do good conservation work for sharks in the ocean. Yeah, and so we've got up on screen there some of, uh, some of that video footage that really is just so captivating during Shark Week is big, great white sharks, big white sharks out there in the open ocean uh, being very toothy and, and impressive. But what is it like to actually uh, be uh, someone who's working with these with these animals out there. Yeah, well, I think you know some of the danger about sharks is is, is a little bit overblown. Um, when I, fir I when I first got into sharks, actually, uh, I got a job studying hammerhead sharks. I was pretty excited about this, having just graduated from college. Um, I was going to swim with hammerhead sharks and count them in the Sea of Cortez around seamounts. I called up my mom to tell her this story and. Uh, uh, there was this long silence, and, and finally she said, well, maybe uh, for graduation present I could get you some shark repellent. <laughs> and I was like, well, how about a, just a ticket to, uh, to Mexico to do the work? Um, but that, that exemplifies this sort of beware of sharks uh, attitude, and, mm -hmm. and we've actually moved kind of beyond that, and today we know that it's more like sharks beware, you know, because mm -hmm. actually humans are a much greater threat to sharks than they are to us. And that's a lot of uh, the work that we're doing here at the Aquarium to inspire conservation of the ocean. And with a, a very popular animal like a white shark, many of you, probably the folks watching out there, many of your favorite animal in the ocean is a white shark, but we don't know a whole lot about them. So that's where you're that's there right. to plug in that that's information. Right. Yeah, and just on that, the idea of white sharks and, and their potential danger, uh, we did a study of all the shark interactions with people going back 50 years. And the number of, of bites uh, that white sharks uh, have, uh, you know, been implicated in on people in California has gone up a little bit over the past 50 years. But the actual risk of a shark attack in California has gone down 90 percent. There's just so wow. many more people in the water, uh, uh, scuba divers, surfers, uh, abalone divers, well, um, mm -hmm. swimmers. Um, and, but th that number has gone up hugely, mm -hmm. but the number of attacks has only gone up a tiny bit. So, in essence, the per capita risk has really, really gone down. Right, and you were mentioning this earlier, that's maybe something to do with the fact that our local white sharks, or white sharks in general, are very discerning predators. They're, they're very keyed in on what they're looking for, because we tend to see footage like, uh, like this, great white there, jumping out of the water with that seal decoy in its mouth. That's what we, that's what we see a lot of during right. Shark Week, but actually they're not really eating all that much, right? That's true. Um, we've uh, been putting on different types of tags on sharks, camera tags. So uh, the camera tag, uh, like like this one here, uh, will be clipped on to the dorsal fin of the shark as it's swimming by the boat, and it'll um, record what the shark's seeing. It also has a device in it, like a Fitbit, that measures its activity. Uh, it's it's not its steps, but its fin uh, beats, and so we can monitor the activity, how often they race to the surface, how often they jump, and we can see what the shark is seeing. And so here we have some video footage up of that uh, shark point of view, taking a look at another shark. I, I like to think that that other shark is saying like, hey man, you just got tagged. <laughs> um, but so this was out in, in South Africa there, um, putting that camera tag you were just mentioning there on, on the shark. Yeah, so uh, uh, these, uh, these cameras will tell us how often a shark will find a school of prey, or uh, or when it sees other other large sharks, you know, or might see a killer whale or something that uh, would be actual a, actual predator for the white shark. So, 
Uh, this gives us real insight. And one of the surprising things that we've learned, which I think you were getting to, is that uh, white sharks are actually super picky eaters. Mm. Uh, they do not eat that much, uh, meaning they eat a lot at one time, but they do not eat that frequently. So a large seal or sea lion could last a shark weeks or even a month. Um, and so they might go that time between when you see a jump with an actual seal, they might go you know, two or three weeks between actually feeding on those, uh, on those seals. So. And speaking of that um, feeding here, uh, this, what we have up on screen right now, uh, these are the Farallon Islands, which are just off of San Francisco, about 20 miles out, right? And then on those islands are a lot of uh, shark snacks out there. So tell yeah. us maybe a little bit about that. So, uh, you know, our research over the past uh, 10 to 15 years has shown that the white sharks, uh, the larger white sharks, are key, really keyed in to where these seals and sea lions are, especially in California. There's uh, like the Farallon Islands, there are big rookeries where there's hundreds, uh, sometimes thousands of, of elephant seals, sea lions um, just pulled up on the rocks. And the, and the white sharks just spend so many weeks and months just swimming round and round that area and they wait for those opportunities. Um, but those opportunities aren't as frequently, uh, you know, uh, occurring as we thought. Hmm. And so um, out there on the Farallons is where a lot of the... A lot of the work is being done with our local sharks, right, for our, our local adult sharks because there's different sizes of shark up and down the coast. That's right. So the large sharks are found in these colder northern and central California waters where the, there are lots of seals and sea lions. Uh, the smaller sharks, when they're first born, uh, white sharks give live birth. Uh, a, a newborn shark is actually four and a half uh, to five feet long hmm. at birth. And uh, those first start appearing in Southern California, so off of Los Angeles and northern Baja. This is typically where you'll see all the little ones. These are called nurseries, shark pup nurseries. Um, and they'll be there for the first few years of their life. And then they'll make a transition up to these colder waters where they'll stop targeting little fish and rays that they normally eat at that small size and start moving towards a diet of seals, sea lions, and scavenging on whale carcasses, things like that. Interesting. Yeah, so there are uh, white sharks all up and down the coast changing their behavior sort of as they, as they go. And one of the probably most uh, famous behaviors that you uh, discovered along with your colleagues is that these white sharks don't stay in the coastal area. They actually migrate very long distances. Yeah, I mean, you always think that uh, when, where you see something, that's where it normally is. But uh, when we started putting on uh, these pop-up tags on the white sharks, uh, they began telling us that actually the sharks move offshore and they head out very far from shore and very deep uh, and they head out between California and Hawaii, basically in the middle of the ocean, uh, to an area that we've uh, started calling the White Shark Cafe. And so uh, there, there's this annual cycle where every winter the larger sharks are heading out there, uh, they're spending months out there and uh, then eventually returning back to California. Interesting. And so we have now on the screen that, that white shark cafe area, which is what we used to call the, the middle of nowhere. If you folks are familiar with the uh, North Pacific gyre, where the plastic uh, trash tends to be recirculated, it's kind of in that same general area. But for a long time, people thought this was just a desert and they're heading out for who knows why. But uh, you just got back, found out some interesting things. It's not really a desert, is it? No. Uh, you know, from space, if you use uh, satellites to try and see what's uh, in the ocean, uh, the plankton and, and primary producers, the things that, fo you know, get their energy from the sun, they reflect in a certain way. And, and so satellites can tell us where that's going on. All of along the coast are very productive areas, but that area, there's just nothing at the surface. And so people for years have thought this is the desert of the Pacific. And, uh, but the sharks told us something very different. Uh, maybe they're heading out to the desert. Sometimes I think about it like Burning Man. You know, <laughs> you got these Bay Area sharks. Once a year they head out into the desert. Mm -hmm. um, God knows what they're doing out there, but uh, they do it every year. It seems um, very important to keep yes, doing it too. Yeah. Yeah. So finally we got a, a, a vessel to take us out there. It was a Schmidt Ocean uh, Institute. Uh, very beautiful boat called the Falcor. Um, so a team of 12 researchers, myself included, went out there uh, to study this area. And uh, we put out a bunch of these pop-up tags. Uh, these tags uh, were programmed to come off uh, on 
you know, each day of the cruise. So when a tag would pop off, we'd bring the ship over there and we'd drop down a remotely operated uh, underwater submersible vehicle. Uh, we'd, uh, you know, drag some nets through the water. Um, we had uh, different types of underwater drones and surface uh, drones sailing around, uh, taking water samples and whatnot um, to try and understand this area. And uh, it's pretty intriguing. There's not a lot going on at the surface, but when you get down below, there's this whole community of life down there. Uh, things that you wouldn't see from space, things that you would only see uh, when you get down uh, and look underwater. Very interesting. Yeah, we have the video footage right now uh, or the animation there of one of those satellite tags and then I'll, I'll pull up this uh, diving data animation as well because not only do we know that they're in this spot when they're out there, there's some very interesting dynamics. These are fish, they're not whales or turtles that come up and breathe on the surface. Uh, so they can be completely hidden their entire life beneath the surface, but with those tags you can really see that sort of secret life of sharks and they're doing interesting yeah. things down there. I mean, the beautiful thing about these tags is that they're recording uh, their depth every three seconds. So we get this, uh, you know, you get these graphs back, the data back that show the intricate uh, diving behavior. And what we're seeing is these white sharks, the males in particular, are diving up and down to almost a thousand feet and uh, up to a hundred feet during the um, night and day, up and down, sometimes 150 times a day, day and night, weeks, uh, weeks on end. A lot of energy. We've tagged a lot of different sharks and fish. And we've never seen this type of behavior. So it's, it's, it's really intriguing. Um, there's a whole other set of behavior that we see in the females mm -hmm. and sometimes with the males, which is much more aligned with tracking the food that's out there because mm -hmm. that has a, a day-night migration that occurs. All the little plankton, the shrimp, and the squid, they kind of form this blanket out in the middle of the ocean. At nighttime, mm -hmm. it all comes up, and during mm -hmm. the day, it all goes down. And the white sharks are, are following that. We think that behavior is related to feeding. But this other uh, rapid diving is, is something we've never seen. And it remains kind of a mystery. So we're, we're taking all the information that we've got and, and really doing some, some um, data analysis, which is a big part of my job, uh, yeah. on trying to recreate what those activities are about. Yeah, trying to figure out what, what the sharks are doing from a tag on its back. You know, imagine if you could just be just you know, on the back of a whale and you're trying to figure out what a whale is all about. That's like, right. It's, it's, pretty, it's it, pretty difficult. Right. Well, it's, yeah. you know, these are things that uh, technology can do. You can wear a, an activity tracker on your wrist mm -hmm. and it knows when you're walking, when you're running, mm -hmm. when you're doing laps in a pool. Um, so the technology is sort of getting there to try and um, recreate that. But, um, you know, it's, yeah. it's slow going. Well, it works out great because a lot of these Bay Area sharks are very health conscious too. So, you know, they're watching, trying to eat the kale seal a little bit. You that's know, right. Kind of, yeah. That's right. Um, so you, so we, have these, we have this White Shark Cafe. That's sort of that ongoing story. It's perfect that you're on the Falcor because it's a never-ending story, right? To try to that's figure right. out what's going on that's out right. there. Um, but then back in, in local waters, there's some interesting stories that are just happening right now in the physical Monterey Bay. A lot of visitors come to the aquarium and they're... Uh, they're, they're surprised to find out that there are in fact great white sharks in, in the Monterey Bay uh, and we're studying them and so there's uh, there have been some interesting things with younger sharks hanging out, especially near Santa yeah. Cruz. So as I said, typically the younger and newborn sharks are confined to Southern California and Mexico where the water's warmer um, and the adults are more central and Northern California and then they move offshore. But lately, since about 2014, we've been seeing a lot of newborn and some, you know, one to two year old uh, sharks in uh, Monterey Bay, particularly in the north end, uh, close to Santa Cruz. Um, and that's been a daily occurrence. Uh, they're swimming around at the surface in the afternoon. And so, you know, this is kind of a new phenomena. And we, we think we know a little bit about why this is occurring. Uh, in 2014, there was a very warm year. Uh, it was the warm blob. Um, uh, we had actually right after that in 2015 and 2016 an extended El Nino and uh, white sharks weren't the only, you know, juvenile white sharks weren't the only new species we saw up in the bay. We saw these pelagic red crabs, a lot of different mm -hmm. species that we hadn't seen here before because it's usually uh, too far north. So we think that this warmer uh, water uh, made it possible for the smaller sharks to get up in this area. And now that they're here, um, you know, the, the sharks, before they begin migrating offshore, they got to grow up in the coastal waters. And um, mm -hmm. in the spring, when uh, wind starts blowing and the water gets cold here locally, um, 
there's always this warm pocket of water up in the North mm. Bay, right off of Aptos. Mm. Sometimes it's 10 degrees warmer there than it is just outside near Año Nuevo or one of these more traditional places where we see white sharks. And, and that's think, significant with 50 degree water kind of up and down the coast. That's absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in the water uh, and it's 10 degrees warmer, you know it. Mm -hmm. um, and so we think that the sharks are, are there and, and, and clustering together to stay warm, to warm up their bodies during the middle of the day. And then they'll go off at night and um, do their feeding. So we, we were actually tagging um, and we've got some, uh, uh, picked up a camera tag yesterday that we're still downloading to try and understand a little bit about this behavior. But uh, it's very exciting. Yeah. I mean, this may be something new uh, as climate is changing, oceans warming. Uh, this may be something that we're going to see uh, more frequently. It may be mm -hmm. here to stay, or maybe it'll come in phases. Uh, but I think it says something about how people and sharks can can coexist. I mean, you know, California has done a great job of of uh, ocean conservation. We've we've protected seals and sea lions. Sea lions are back to carrying capacity as of a year ago, mm. um, uh, and uh, we've excluded uh, gillnet fisheries from very close to the shore. And we've done a lot of things to help the animals in this area. And so if we are seeing uh, positive signs, we may start seeing uh, white sharks uh, doing well. And that would be a, an amazing success and a, and a great story. But at the same time, I guess we got to figure out how to coexist with these uh, majestic predators in the ocean, the ocean that we all share. Yeah, and we know that uh, ecosystems that have their top predator in them are healthy ones. And so we can be very proud as Californians that we do have these white sharks in our, in our area. And as more and more people want to go to the ocean, as more sharks are there, um, that interaction is going gonna, is gonna to happen more. But having all the information, all the data about what these animals are doing and uh, looking at the science, that's really critical to help us have a real relationship instead of maybe just what we see on TV and on the news. That's right. I mean, watching TV, you'd think that it's, it's more and more dangerous every year. But in fact, we've looked at the numbers and over the last 50 years, the rat risk of going into the ocean or, you know, whether you're surfing, whether you're scuba diving or swimming has dropped by 90% mm -hmm. over the last 50 years. So it is actually uh, less risky than ever to swim in California, even though uh, you know, there are more reports uh, of seeing these sharks. Um, but, you know, awareness is key. Mm -hmm. um, and knowing when is a good time, when is not. Look at beaches to see if they're posted um, mm -hmm. and, and, and be careful. You know, mm -hmm. uh, these, are, these are things we're, we've figured out to a certain extent, you know, in Yellowstone. How do we right. enjoy the parks uh, when there's grizzly bears around? Mm -hmm. You know, this is something that uh, these are conversations we need to have and, and figure this mm -hmm. out going forward. Yeah, well, in any case, thank you so much for all of the work that you're doing to help us get that, that real picture of great white sharks. Uh, sharks out there, um, they don't get to update their own Facebook statuses themselves, but with no thumbs. So it's important for you to uh, get that data so we can share what's going on with those, with those white sharks out there. Uh, we look forward to more research. Thanks for watching on, on YouTube. I don't know if there are any uh, final thoughts for, for Shark Week, for YouTube, anything. What, what are you doing the rest of today? Do you have anything? Uh, Today, I'm, I'm really excited about this, uh, this camera tag that we got back. Um, uh, we're trying to download all the data, get it charged back up, and uh, you know, see what we're going to do next. So, exciting stuff. Very cool. All right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in, and thanks for having me, Patrick. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for being here, Sal. Uh, you can watch this replay on YouTube. We also did uh, some other live streams on Periscope and on Facebook if uh, you need to share it with any of your friends. But we're going to sign off right now if I can figure out which screen that is. But thanks so much for following us here at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, everybody. And uh, see you again soon. Thanks, Sal. Sure.